This is just a wonderful story. Finally, we got something here. A gambling scandal. (laughs) Matt Rebikowski, and if I screwed his name up, I apologize, of SportsHandle.com. He says, and he reported on this, that the NFL is investigating a Colts player for gambling. Uh Now, ESPN was reporting yesterday that the player involved is cornerback slash kick returner Isaiah Rogers. Uh oh. And then Isaiah Rogers himself confirmed, yes, it's me that may have a gambling problem. Uh oh. And so here is the details of this report. Uh, according to ESPN and against again, sportshandle.com who are all over this and did a great job on it. The sports betting account was opened under the name of an associate of Rogers. There were approximately a hundred bets placed with the account, including on Colts games. Most of the bets were in the 25 to $50 range, but at least one was a four figure bet. Now, the statement from Isaiah Rogers himself on social media said the following, quote, addressing the current reports, I want to take full responsibility for my actions. I know I have made mistakes and I am willing to do whatever it takes to repair the situation. The last thing I ever wanted to do was to be a distraction to the Colts organization, my coaches and my teammates. I've let people down that I care about. I made an error in judgment and I'm going to work hard to make sure that those mistakes are rectified through the process. It's an honor honor to play in the NFL and I have never taken that lightly. I am very sorry for all of this. End of statement from Isaiah Rogers. So it's the second time a Rogers has been in the news this offseason. One is now a Jet and the other one apparently is uh is on the set of Casino just making uh, making bets, play, placing wagers. This is now now we're talking, okay? Enough of this rinky dink 17 parlay stories. Enough of these college football bets that guys got popped for. Nah, this dude is gambling. He's in it to, to win it. In it to win it. Don't sound like he's betting that much, though. 25 to 50 bucks for me. That's not a lot of money. I, I would shut the lights off for three hours to make sure I had enough money in the account. Oh, my gosh. Jones, to try and get a bet on. in. I know what you make. Okay. Uh, but here's here's the part that I would like to point out here. First of all, I blame the NFL. I think the NFL, and we could say, look, you got to be accountable for your actions, and I get all that. But the NFL has some fault in this as well, too, because the NFL wanted to get in the gambling world because the NFL saw all the money that they could be making and realized, oh, let's get into it. And they didn't do a good enough job buttoning up what could be the potential pitfalls for some of these players who now have access to a gambling account and don't realize, hey, uh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe this is a bad look. Maybe this is illegal. Maybe I should read instructions and read the warnings and all the other things that come along with us accepting this into our league from the Players Association, et cetera, et cetera. So I blame the NFL in that regard. Here's also why I blame the National Football League for Isaiah Rogers getting popped for placing 100 bets, some of which may have been on the Colts reportedly and one four-figure bet. He is also a kick returner. And with what they've done to so kick a th- offs. $1,000. Yeah. In the 1000 I mean, if, if what they've done to kick offs is any indication as to how they care about the position and what's going to happen. He's trying to supplement his income. Yeah, he's trying to make some money on the side. He's so stupid. Okay, so the NFL deserves full responsibility and full blame for what happened here with Isaiah Rogers. Okay, because now what you have done to kickoffs, you've eliminated a great – just a positional uh, a, a position in the league, something that's got value. You've eliminated something that lets everybody know, hey, the game's underway, the game's starting. They're trying to take that away from everybody, and now this guy's trying to make a little bit extra cash on the side. They've crippled one of the great moments in the NFL, and now you've got guys who have to open up gambling accounts to try and make ends meet. I blame the NFL. No suspension for Isaiah Rogers here. Wow. What a great rant there. All you right. like that? Great rant. <laughs> you know, a, great rant. I mean, that was a great rant. I'm, t- I'm trying to defend the guy here. Let me let me ask you this. He, you said he did it in second person, like a second party. Yeah, he had a, an associate do it. Okay, so my first question is, what what flagged 
if he had an associate doing it, what was flagged? Because I sure enough said use an associate. So yeah. let's start there. How was he flagged for doing this through an associate? I That we are waiting to find out the details on. Okay, because there has to be something here where it was egregious enough for an investigation to be started, especially if a dude is betting 25 and $50. Yeah. Like, there's got to be something more to it than 25 and $50 and maybe a few or one that was $1,000, uh, over $1,000. And and the way the story came out, because remember we were here, because when you had the players who got popped from the Lions and from the Commanders, and then this report came out like last week that the NFL was investigating another gambling scandal, and... We didn't get the details, and then the way this story came out, oh, it's a Colts player. We think we know who the player is, and then the player comes out without getting any of the details out on the story to defend himself. This feels like, in all seriousness, that this one's a little bit more severe than maybe the Calvin Ridley and some of these other uh, gambling stories have been with the NFL. But and- again, I'm trying to understand how is it more – how is it more serious? Like if you're if you're betting fifty dollars every week on the Colts, is that what makes it serious in nature? What what makes because to me the amount is so minuscule. Like, are you saying okay, this is maybe he's done that under over multiple accounts, multiple people, multiple other second party people what makes this and, and listen gambling on on your own team is is like you're a degenerate like i don't care if it's five dollars you're a degenerate if you're if you're dumb enough even five bucks if you're dumb enough to bet on your own team you're dumb like you are like let's just start there you are a dummy um but with that being said if that's the case, if that's what if that's what this investigation is, again, I just want to understand what like that's not enough money where you'd be like, there's no way this second party would have been able to to make this bet. So how do you create a correlation between Isaiah Rogers and the second party for gambling? What triggered this off? What yeah. made this matter? That's what I really want to know. It could be, and and this is all speculation, because I think as the way this story is gone, we're going to get more of the details that come out throughout the next few days. And this will open up another avenue or another pathway to how players can possibly bet. But I think what's my guess would be that they somehow – talked with that the, maybe there was an I, uh, an address that was used or maybe there was an email account associated to it but whatever the case may be dumb. i think the the That's worst dumb. the the worst case scenario for the nfl in this story is if it got flagged because this person was making bets on certain aspects of a Colts game that were that, that only directly you, impacted by him that only you know if you've got intel on the team yeah that's where this could get ugly for the NFL. But you've been on this from the start. Why are you doing it yourself? I mean, it's dumb. The Chris Carter fall guy thing does apply here. If you really want to get a bet in, find somebody else to do it, and now somebody else did it, and so you wait to you wait to see whether or not somebody shot their mouth off, a teammate reported it to somebody, the Colts have already acknowledged that they are, you know, aware of the investigation and they're going to be looking into it. But this is where the NFL opened this whole thing up and opened up this world to the league without really doing their due diligence to find out, hey, this is where this could be a problem. This is what guys could do if this were the case. And a lot of these guys, I I, I truly don't believe that a lot of these guys realize that they're doing anything wrong. I truly believe that. Like Calvin Ridley bet on some Falcons games, and but the way he did it were parlays. 
And I could see Calvin Ridley saying to himself, listen, I'm sitting at home. I'm trying to get my, my head together. I got a lot of stuff going on in my life. There's NFL oh, Let me take on. a break from life and go well, ahead and just throw a little gamble down, a little parlay down. But when you when you place a that's parlay. Bogus. That's, but, that's, a, that's bogus, but, man. But when you place a parlay, you go on to your gambling app. And anybody listening to this knows what I'm talking about. You go onto your gambling app and you go, all right. So who's playing this week? I like, uh, okay, I like the I like the Lions here. Oh, my Falcons are playing. I definitely think they're going to win. I like this team, this team, this team. You make a bunch of bets and then you bet the parlay, and they all need to hit in order for you to win. To me, that doesn't feel as drastic as at least a hundred different bets from an account. Yes, only $25 to $50, but one in the four-figure range. And without a doubt, on your own team, that feels a lot worse than somebody going on saying, yeah, I think these seven teams are going to win in this bet in, in, in this week, and, and this is my pick for the week. Like that, This feels like it's got a little darker vibe to it that's been attached to it. I mean, the, with moment, the, way it come the out. moment they said he was betting on his own team, that's, that's, that's the red flag. That's the all-the-way red flag. Because you can draw whatever conclusion you'd like to draw from it. Like, that's that's really what it comes down to. What the details of it is, how it was flagged, I would like to know. I would. That, to me, is the juiciest part of this story because it's not enough money involved for it to really matter. It's not like this dude was clocking, clocking cash. Like, he was making six-figure, you know, bets on, on games that he was playing in. Like, that's – he's a six-round draft pick. Um, he probably doesn't have very much money, and in the final year of uh, his four year deal, he probably doesn't have very much money, and and so in the end, w- what triggered this? What what stimulated? What 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 set off the alarm to go investigate a twenty five fifty dollar betting dude? And now it becomes an investigation. Now it becomes public domain. Now it's being discussed over media platforms, and and people are left to try to draw conclusions. What what was the reasoning behind this for such small bets? That's what I would like to know. Yeah, because there's something more here. Yeah, it feels and, like it. And maybe maybe the more here is it wasn't more other than if he got away with doing it. Other guys might start doing bigger bets on their own teams. If if somebody out there has found the loophole and is making money off of making bets on their own team, the NFL could be you know if they get caught up, that that could be a very very bad look. I mean we've had that conversation multiple times on this show. That could be a bad look if somebody thinks that they can start making those types of bets and and be able to get away with it and find and figure out the loophole, then the NFL runs the risk of having a serious situation. So maybe that's the reason why. Maybe it's just as simple as that, is that you're talking about a guy that wasn't egregious in the amount of money that he was spending on these bets, but nonetheless he was betting on his own team. And that that in itself, in nature, like it's serious in nature to be betting on on the NFL and you're in the NFL. It's crazy, dumb, stupid, ridiculously boneheaded to be betting. I don't care a dollar on your on the team that you play on. That's what's bad. That's what's really bad. And by the way, if you are an NFL player and you want to play some bets, it's dude. Just let me do it for you. I mean, come on, let, let, let me do it for you because I could use a win, all right? I could use any sort of win that I could get. So if you've got intel on your own team, just hit me up and I'll place the bet for you if that's the way this has got to work. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, let, that's let, probably, let me take care of it. You know, the more I keep thinking about it, if you start getting into betting money and stuff like that, I mean, who's to say that you give that money to somebody to bet for you and they don't keep it and then hold it over your head? Like, look here, man. You're risking your career for this. I mean, do you want me to snitch? Yeah. You want me to turn you in? Like, just take this L. I'm going to take this 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 $5 million that you made, and uh, we're just going to keep it moving. What, what if it comes out that he started betting against the Colts the second Jeff Saturday took over as head coach? 
then he then should get he he should get a a break. <laughs> yeah, he should he should two get a year wa- extension. He should get a warning. <laughs> two, <laughs> two year extension. Yeah, he should get a warning. Trying to tell you guys, I opened up a gambling account for this. Everybody was betting against the Colts <laughs> like, except me. Like, <laughs> I'd be the one the first game. Yes, he did. That was um, it. He, he he went on vacation after that. <laughs> I was like, hey, I got to win as a coach, and uh, I'm good here. 